I want to talk a little bit about this. When you, when you say South Central LA, right? You lived it. Yeah. I, I'm a country boy. I grew up here in the Central Valley. Like, I I have my vision of South Central LA, but it's all shaped from the movies and the music. Yeah. So when I think about South Central LA, I think about NWA. I think about the lyrics. I hear you know the the um, gangster rap was big when I was growing up. Mm-hmm. And but mm-hmm. the one that really that was got me era. was. Remember the movie Colors? Yeah. When Colors came out, in my opinion, it, it glamorized the gang life for me. I was like, wow, this this seems exciting and dangerous and scary. I even went so far as to buy, you remember them starter jackets? Yeah. There was a Georgetown starter jacket, right. a white one. We used to wear that the girl. Okay, you had every that. Every football, every <laughs> football uh, team. Yeah, I don't, okay, yeah. Cut you off. The Raiders, especially, right? Yeah. So I remember the girl in the movie, she had that jacket. I was like, I want to get that jacket. And I asked for that for Christmas. And so that was my first uh, idea or concept that, okay, there's different types of gangs and there's different colors that represent. The sides, right? This is like my education into it. I'm sure other guys learned it differently, but you were actually there in South Central watching all of this evolve. What can you tell us about the comparison between what the media depicted and what was really going on in the streets? Was it an accurate depiction? Some of it, but what they leave out is all the death and all the pain and all the suffering. Okay, they glorify because, yeah, they want people to watch the movies, watch the movie. buy the record. But if they show all the truth, then you have a different story. People come out looking at it a little different. I sense, when you, when you say that, I sense some pain there. Did you lose some friends? Did you lose a lot of people mm-hmm. growing up? At least 20. Wow. Probably more if I start counting them. Can't count them on my finger. And these are guys you grew up with? These ain't the ones that I lost lately to cancer, uh, heart attack, stroke. I ain't talking about them. I'm talking the ones that died on the street from gang gang violence. Do you remember your first experience with firsthand witnessing violence on the streets? Yeah. What was that? How old were you when this happened? I was a... I was the same age as the kid that got killed. I was 14 years old. 14 years old. Yeah. It was just, gang and just rival gangs? Mm-hmm. Drive-by type situations? I'm, I'm not sure. He was around the corner uh, from where we all basically had our kind of headquarters. Yeah. So he was kind of around the block, close to rivals. And it was kind of... Yeah, they called him right there. It was horrific. And you knew this guy? Oh, yeah, I went to school with him. I grew up with him. I knew his mom, his sisters. His mom fed us. We all went to each other's houses and stuff all the time. Wow. All the time. In South Central, I could go to your mom's house, and she would be like, Eddie, you, I'm cooking dinner. You hungry? Yeah, mom. Yeah, miss. So, so you guys all knew each other. Mm-hmm. We respect each other's parents like we respected our own parents. Yeah. Back then, we respect parents. We don't talk back and all that. Whatever we did, we hid it because we want our parents to, oh, hi, Eddie, how you doing today? We don't want to look at, oh, that bad little, which that turned out after a while. It could kind of, but as we got older, we started getting them back on the good foot. So with your, growing up, yeah. they would, yeah. So with your parents... How aware were they of, of everything that you were going through? Oh, very aware of it. Mm, like, everything I was doing, I hid a lot of stuff. My parents don't know a lot of stuff that I did because I hid it. But they knew about the hustle and all those type of things. So, we now get to high school age. Did you, where'd you go to high school? I finished high school in juvenile hall. Okay. But did you start at a certain school out in L.A. or, or were you like already? Like I said, when I start getting into a lot of trouble around the eighth grade, yeah, um, I went to the ninth grade in Fremont High School. Okay, but before I finished, what city's Fremont? Los Angeles. Okay, LA. South Central L.A. So you're That's a Fremont high, high school. school in my neighborhood, and so everybody went there. So you started there, and, and then as you started to get in trouble, so Hispanics. Yeah. What was your oh, first? Yeah. What was your first initial experience with the Crips? 
Because I know you had mentioned that that was the gang that you were affiliated with. My first experience is with the guys that I grew up with. So do they ask, you invited we in, or like, how does we, it happen? We just evolved into it. And you then know, you say, hey, do you We all kind of grew up, like you said, playing baseball, playing on the baseball teams and football teams, and because we grew up in the same area. Yeah. So we all knew each other. So, like I said, we were, we were really these guys that looked up to these older guys, which, and back then there was a lot of, pimps back then pimps it was a lot of pimping back yeah. then in the 70s 80s now these pimps in your area mm-hmm. were they like looked up people looked up to them because they were making good money they were true and pimps yeah they were true pimps back then they really had their stuff together they drove and nice you guys cars, admired had that. nice clothes would these guys ever come to you and advise you or try to guide you in any way or not on that level because I respected women more than that. Yeah, I didn't want I didn't want no part of that right there. Yeah, putting women on the streets. Now, I didn't want to make money off women. I love women too much for that. I never got into that. Okay. So the, um, but I looked up to them because they had nice clothes, nice cars, nice jewelry, lots of girls. Okay, that part drove me to liking them. But when I got into the D game, then some people would think I was a pimp because I had a lot of girls with me on my team. But, but that wasn't, wasn't that wasn't your business. Mm-mm. You were in the sales. Mm-hmm. So you would say that by freshman sophomore year, you're out of school by then and just hustling full time, or where are you at that well, point? Well, like I said. Um, I did do some time in juvenile hall. Okay. I went from Fremont High School in the ninth grade. I um, I ended up going to an all boys school. In uh, East LA. Oh, that so all, boys all boys school, school was called Jackson High School. Okay. But it was for all boys. That was schools that wouldn't get kind of like a continuation type. Yeah. School? Okay. And it started from 10th, 11th, and 12th. And I ended up going there from 9th, 10th. I went there 9th, 10th, and from there I ended up going to Juvenile Hall. Yeah. So I finished 12th grade in Juvenile Hall. I got my my diploma and stuff like that. And then I came home. I was done with school by the end. Yeah.